Hi guys, welcome to This Is Not A Podcast, episode 3. Uh, I'm tired of giving these intros, so we should get right into the topics, guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Why do you speak like a news reporter? <laughs> Shamali, how was your weekend? Week Why day? are you targeting it towards <laughs> me? I, I did nothing important last week and you know that. But I mean, it was a rather boring week and nothing to even watch on like OTT, at least for me. Um, but I'm looking forward. For you means what? Means some people may have things to watch. I don't have. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward for Barbie and Oppenheimer. When is that coming out in India? Is 21st it, July. 21st. It's out in other places, right? No, but no. I thought that's only viewing for critics yet. I don't know. I don't know. I, I could be I, wrong. I'm seeing, like, I, starting to see... I go on book my show every day because me and Balu have this idea that we want to watch the same show on the same day. Hmm. Same and, show? I mean, the both the show, both the movies on the same day. That's not just you and Balu. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrong <laughs> 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 oh, <you're laughs> They invented the Barbie Oppenheimer meme. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> me and Balu. <laughs> this podcast was short. In January. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I go and book my show every day to check. Just in case we don't have enough tickets. Clearly what that's how your week went. Huh? What about the rest of us? I, yeah, I'm looking for all of you. Okay. So July 21st, we'll be there in Lulu Mall. Okay. <laughs> so in current affairs, <laughs> this, uh, this director, he's 34 years old. He has made like I think six or seven or eight movies. What's his name? Xavier, uh, Wait, Xavier Dolan. He's the one who made Barbie. No, no, no. He's, he's made six or seven what? Xavier Movies. Dolan, not okay. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fake name. <laughs> and so his first movie came out when he was like 19 years old in 2009. He's only 34 years old now. Mm-hmm. And it won a bunch of awards in the Cannes Film Festival. So he's like a genius. And he's made a bunch of movies. And recently, uh, but you haven't heard of them. Uh, yeah, recently, the yeah, <laughs> but they're all critically acclaimed. They're all they've all won a bunch of awards, and they're all great movies. Honestly, what like, kind of movies? Uh, it's a lot of drama. It's a lot of coming of age. Uh, but English, like, yeah, English, yeah. Mo- English or French also, because okay. he's from Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, so recently, he retired filmmaking. He's thirty four years old. He's like, that's it. I'm not making any more movies. I'm struggling way too much for m- these movies not to get the attention that they deserve. So and the that's something you're struggling way too much to to not get the attention that it deserves. So wait, it's critically acclaimed but not commercially successful. Yeah, it's not commercial. Like oh, people don't watch it. Like oh, it, okay. it wins awards and things. Okay. And it has won awards, but people, it's not in the mainstream, and he's sort of tired of that. But I kind of like as a creator. So I wanted your perspective. So th- this is not me as a creator, but as a consumer of content. Like when I watch a movie, I just watch it for the entertainment value. I don't really watch it for the the artistic. I mean, I do watch movies that are artistic, but I don't like if I really want to like end the day and watch some slapstick comedy or watch like a chick flick, it won't be for the artistic value in that movie. It's just to sort of blow off some steam. Okay. And so for you watching an art house movie is not blowing off steam. It's it, yeah, that, I feel like I have to concentrate a little more. I okay. have to pay a little more attention to the detail, actually appreciate the art. Like, I feel okay. like I won't do it justice if I'm watching it without that kind of concentration. Okay. Um, especially because it's so much effort that's put into it, right? So, yeah, that's my... I mean, I personally watch movies for merely entertainment uh, value. And that's why I, like, I love Bollywood. Because I feel like, I mean, I'm not trying to like say that they don't have like artsy movies or good movies, but I like the entertainment value in them more. I love the okay. song and the dance and all of that. Uh, no, but I mean, from the I mean the question creators from side. the creator's perspective, yeah. I mean, I don't have a creator's opinion on this. I mean, no, you do. You are a creator. Uh, and yeah, but I don't really do very artistic sort of work, right? Right. Okay. So for me, again, like when I'm creating content, I'm trying to provide the entertainment aspect of it. So now if someone's watching it, I would expect them to like be entertained by it and not probably commend me on, okay, that shot was really beautiful. Or uh, no, no. What, it's is, a, what is the guy's name? Uh, Xavier Dolan. No, so, I have, so wait, I'll just, I'll just have a question. So, mm-hmm. um, so when you're serving a purpose to an audience, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes... Sometimes your desire for what the video has to be and what the video uh, should be for the audience, Mm -hmm. they have, it's an intersection. It doesn't always have to be the same thing. So it's not about how beautiful the shot is. It's more of what you wanted for that video. So does that always align? Like the Um, audience? No, it doesn't. It doesn't always align. So that's what, so when you make a video that's for yourself, for your enjoyment and you upload it and it doesn't do well, does that, does that bother you or? So it does to a certain extent, but not enough for me to stop making the kind of videos I do make um, because at the end of the day I feel like 
because again instagram is a little different right like your audience keeps going through different changes right like if i do a certain kind of reel i'll have an influx of a certain kind of audience and then because i don't follow a niche i may start doing different kind of reels and then the audience that previously came in may not like that so it'll keep changing it's very very like um i feel like it's also a little trend specific for me personally so if it doesn't match the audience expectation it's not like i'll stop making videos but i get why he is frustrated by this right because for him it's a niche that he's actually specialized in um and if it's still not met the kind of reception that he's anticipated for it then i understand why he's disheartened but again i don't think that should lead to him stop stopping like filmmaking so wait are studios like not picking up his movies and not distributing it i'm not sure what it is i'm not i'm not i don't know about the details but he has himself said it's not a sad thing it's just that i feel like i've put in too much work for it to not get the recognition it deserves that does a his no so what i think is if you're creating something uh i mean personally for me i'm creating it for myself like this is one of the reasons i don't like criticism on my videos because i'm not making it for you guys i'm making it for myself because i love making videos with my friends and family uh so when that happens uh does it impact me that i put up a video and i think it's a great video and people are not watching it i see it as you guys haven't developed that taste yet it doesn't mean that that video is bad i i don't think a video is defined by the number of views it gets it doesn't mean that a video with a billion views is a great video and a video with 100 views is not a great video it could be that the 100 views video is just not reached the amount of people it's supposed to reach just because or the right algorithm. audience yeah or the right audience or the uh target so for me when i when i create something i'm creating it for myself uh and i think every artist artist should do that so that you know when but for example like an artist like van gogh for example he made art for himself and he lived his whole life poor so a lot of people are afraid of that i think so do you have like a but I, uh just because of this point that you've raised i feel like um everybody does certain like work to try to meet a specific need right like now if you're working to say meet your financial goals you're going to have to mold your work to sort of be that efficient right like not like you need to be smart you need to judge the market you need to know exactly what will work right so then you maybe the creator of these movies has to sort of strategize in a manner that it'll reach a wider audience and give him that commercial success right so everybody has different goals that they want to meet so if his goal was actually commercial success then i'm sure he would have sort of tweaked his movie to incorporate certain other aspects to make it a commercially no, viable and example, successful film yeah but for example with van gogh i'm sure there were like other artists who were who were extremely well off and they sold a lot of paintings uh and van gogh must have thought that you know these guys are successful and i am not and my my paintings are shit i'm sure he thought of that and he died a terrible death but right now in this room in on like 11th of july 2023 we're talking about van gogh and not all those other artists so he has brought a change in the way we think of art etc so i don't like i feel like that's just how his life was meant to be like he has created great art and nobody picked up on that but how much would you guys uh, attribute marketing to this oh marketing is a big thing like like i love making videos but i hate marketing them and so what goes into that i don't know if you put up if you put up a video on youtube you there are people who, there are creators who put up one video on youtube and then they have 10 stories saying hey guys go swipe up and watch my video on uh, Or like they put up a story on instagram or they put 10 stories and they keep marketing they put photos and like that's the part of the creation i don't like because i'm like if it's a great video it should do well it should account. do well like and if they don't like it then they don't like it i'll make the next one i don't know i feel marketing is important even even though the the video may have been like the best video out there i feel like you need to still market it so that it reaches the right audience um because as of now you have a certain audience that's watching your stuff but that's not enough right the goal is to grow so unless you market something the potential of something to grow i mean obviously there's word of mouth people will refer stuff to each other but it is important to market it so your audience itself grows you're not just reaching out to the 100 people who already are sort of following you you're also trying to go beyond that no but here there's another issue where i can be so uh like easy 
when it comes to something like this where i'm like okay somebody doesn't like it it's their problem i will make another video but when it comes to filmmaking it's such a long process because you are dedicating months and years of your life to make one movie so i understand the pain he feels yeah also. the cost of production but i don't feel insane. i don't think i don't think it's his fault i think the viewers are not caught up to the taste or they don't understand what he's doing maybe in 100 years time we'll talk about this guy as oh my god he was yeah. a genius nobody appreciated his work yeah but it's in, like probably ahead of its time in general the film industry is on a decline right now like not just like really? acclaimed movies it? no a lot of directors have spoken about this it's hard to make a movie that people want to go to the theaters mm. to watch yeah like uh with the rise of ott and like more franchise driven movies such as the yeah. mcu stand alone movies aren't as successful anymore and everyone's spoken about this so when you make a critically acclaimed movie that's more indie and you need a studio like a24 yeah you need the backing and with film you need a mu- you need much more marketing as well like the press tours you go on and s- some directors even cast like sp- specific stars just to drive attention to the movie it's it's man h- khan it's hard to like really prop up a movie like that and if that wasn't his goal it was fine like he could have just kept going with it but since he specifically said like it upsets him that people aren't going to watch maybe he should try tweaking something but i get it uh, but like I, i'm just curious about your perspective like you're the only three of us that doesn't create uh, per se for the internet uh, so when you so your perspective like when we think have to think about thumbnails titles it's active thought but as a consumer i feel like you're not as intentional about those things right so how do you feel about seeing a thumbnail or like a title like how important are those things to you i don't consume much con- content on youtube like i have my core uh, like users that i watch so the thumbnail isn't as effective to me when it comes to film per se i i am i was really into film most i don't watch as much film right now but i was one of those guys that would actively search out for those acclaimed movies and stuff so i feel like i'm not just like the consumer that watches the blockbuster movies so i'm a bit different in that aspect that requires community yeah you find other people that have similar interests like you and it's like but it's a very niche thing so it might not get that success that he was looking out for la la land is a shit movie <laughs> fame is an ardent la la land <laughs> la la land <laughs> is <laughs> La La Land deserved to win that Oscar by the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. my god, can no, we talk about that? But La 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 Land is the exact opposite of your life, bro. What do you mean? He that guy followed his passion. Yeah, <laughs> why do you think I relate to it, bro? <laughs> I you don't relate to me. it. You unrelate no, to it. You're like I, this is who I could have been yeah, if I followed, but I did self insertion. It's uh, like, yeah, I'm it, living vicariously Mike through yeah. Gosling. Okay, okay. And Gosling. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> do you think he's watching this? <laughs> yeah. Well, Fuck, I love you, man. He's me and I'm watching this. Does he fit as Ken or does he fit as Ken? I mean uh, so the internet was saying he's a bit too old but then some of the clips got leaked uh, I mean released and I think everyone's on board with him now. I was on board since day one. I love the guy. He's my favorite actor. I watched every single movie of his except the notebook because I thought it was cliche. I never liked the notebook. But every single movie like he chooses the right script the way he kills a performance. <laughs> bro <laughs> he should play like obama but do you do you biopic. wish like people spoke about you this way they do <laughs> <laughs> read the comments <laughs> but yeah i mean i don't know but I... wait a minute what did you like about la la land so much fuck okay so <laughs> just the opening right it's a cold o- it's a cold open they shoot that in one take having those many moving pieces dancers singers those many extras working as one getting that as a single shot that is insane and those characters don't even come in the movie after that okay. then we see gosling how passionate he is about jazz and everything about it and he's trying to transfer that passion into someone he loves and like the whole interaction they have That's and exactly they what you want to do <laughs> fall in love with each other and how they build each other and how they grow but then success like drives them apart and then they oh have to <laughs> don't spoil the movie for me <laughs> <laughs> oh shit yeah but uh, you think she was more successful than him Uh, that's a, a, a spoiler i can't answer that question the movie came out 10 years back bro yeah if you've not seen it's it been yet it's, it's no, been 10 years no not 10 okay, years okay if you haven't watched la la land swipe off don't swipe off <laughs> skip skip to this uh, time code we'll put the time code you just skip uh, to that yeah i mean she does but success is relative right <laughs> <laughs> No, technically they I both I just asked you that question so you see that. Technically they both don't succeed because they didn't get each other in the end. That's not success. success no, I don't remember deep. the movie at all. What? <laughs> no, she becomes a big star 
a film star and he has a jazz club or something where he Yeah, which is like what he wanted. Like he wanted to bring back jazz yeah, to the city. Yeah, some people's dream is to have a jazz club in their Yeah, like. some people's dream is to be a doctor. You share on doctors the last <laughs> time. Some people just want that. <laughs> no, your dream is to be Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So which one is it? No, I I much Ryan rather Gosling be Ryan Gosling is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> in his next movie. <laughs> Fuck if Ryan Gosling is a doctor in your next movie, you'd be so Bro. hard on by that. <laughs> Fuck. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a moment of silence. <laughs> Are you going to watch Ken as I mean B- Barbie as Ken? I'm, I mean, I, I'm not going to dress up or anything. Why? Because I don't own much pink. First of all. Why is that? Why is that for him? Is it because it's <laughs> <She's> a <pen? laughs> like fighting the urge is like no don't crack the joke No but I'm definitely going first day for sure But are we watching Oppenheimer first No or? no no Barbie first Why Just Yeah what is the logic behind it Yeah what is the logic Um because we're dressing up <laughs> No but I feel like we go for Oppenheimer and it's a sad movie cuz atom bomb and then we go for a I'm assuming Barbie's a happy movie. Barbie's a ha- yeah Yeah I mean, but like you want to also You don't like, want to go for a happy of, movie and then the go for video a sad- before other people on the internet put up a video is that right? all life is about Sharma yeah. just putting up stuff on the internet work is work Sharma I can't afford to take a day off <laughs> <laughs> you're not taking a day off you're uploading at the same time Six hours I'm watching day. a movie in the morning <laughs> that is a day off for me we should do but yoga but apparently there is the, there's one more movie that's coming out the same day some pimkin or kimpin or something like that that's the middle child bro no one cares about <laughs> it <laughs> so we can do yoga breakfast movie lunch not too heavy nap Badminton and then Oppenheimer. With your timing, you'll reach <laughs> us when Babi starts, and all of us will be doing yoga and breakfast <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> What do you guys think of the atom bomb? Yo, what does that to think about? <laughs> it? This is like him asking about the migrant. Here, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, give me hot take. <laughs> <laughs> give me yeah, take. I can put on the reels. <laughs> that is such a weird. <laughs> why are you giving so much attention to Barbie? Atom, why, why are you giving bomb? the same attention to Oppenheimer? Atom bomb bad. <laughs> <Did you laughs> Atom bomb bad. No, but do you think uh, what the US did to Japan was good? Atom, Atom bomb, bomb bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, Atom bomb bad. But think about Pearl Harbor. They had to retaliate. Yeah, yeah I mean, I they agree. And they were supporting Hitler, bro. And bro, the that, fashion that yeah, came about Japan of Japan was not on the side of the Allies. Yeah, they, were, they were with Hitler. Yeah. Okay, That's so you're, you're justifying that. Yeah, fuck yeah, Adam. bro. Hot take, got it. And, and uh, this. <laughs> also, Amer- America. I keep wondering why I'm on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So you no, you were talking about fashion. No, you're saying Kawasaki and Nagasaki. Is it Kawasaki? Hiroshima. Nagasaki is the Hiroshima. Kawasaki and Nagasaki is a bike brand. My favorite. My favorite. Cut this part out, Bali. I'll pay you money for this. My favorite idiom. Hiroshima and DJs. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Those people deserve to die. Brave for Kawasaki. No. Obviously not. They didn't deserve to no, die. No, but he said they they deserved it. He is talking in the heat of the moment. Like, he doesn't know what he's saying. Like like Japan. <laughs> Japan deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you said? Did uh, did Germany deserve to lose the war? Dude, I'm yeah. asking about Japan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh? Japan was supporting Germany. No, Germany did bad. Did Japan deserve two <laughs> atom Germany bombs on them? Bad. <laughs> did Japan deserve two atom bombs on them? No, just one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they they really didn't need the second one. I feel like the first oh, one was, was a flex, bro. Yeah, was a flex. <laughs> yeah, the second one was really unnecessary. No, Now, the, Kawasaki they make, was. They just wanted to make the movie longer. <laughs> <laughs> they knew years later they would be. Oppenheimer couldn't be a short <laughs> film. <laughs> <laughs> Oppenheimer couldn't be a short film. Oh, that's a good one. Really But good. what do you guys think about Pearl Harbor? Bad Good movie. Atom bomb. Band. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Harbor is also a movie, no? Bomb. Great yeah, band. Movie. Oh, that's Pearl Jam. No, no, Pearl Harbor is a movie. Pearl Harbor is a Pearl movie. movie yeah. Yeah. It had Ma- uh, Matt Damon and. Uh, I love Cameron. Matt Damon. Bro, much. leave it to Americans, man. They they fuck them over with two atom bombs, but they'll still make the movie about where they're the victims. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you dressed in a kurta? I just felt. You look so good. I felt Indian today. Yeah, you should have given me a heads up, bro. I my yeah, knees I are like exposed. Yeah, I feel like I'm too covered. All of you both are so like my whatever knees, dressed bro, and are you yeah. always impeccably dressed. I'm always trying. Yeah. Shamini is Shamini is having these conversations because she we want she wants us to talk about her dress but no. <laughs> no, I really genuinely don't care. <laughs> you look good. Uh, do you guys do you guys make good on that Zara sale? No. I didn't buy a single thing. No, I I didn't buy a single Dude, thing. Dude, I, I was I only on buy the after app. the sale. 
I I remember it was the first podcast we were shooting and that's when the sale went live and I put a timer for 9 p.m. because that's when it started. 8:55 <laughs> the app was still not working. I got oh. tensed. But yeah, because like I had like around seven things in my basket. 9 o'clock I opened the app. I already have three things sold out from that. So people really went crazy, and also it makes sense, right? Because Zara is so expensive; it's horridly yeah, and, expensive. Yeah, and and they have a sale every three months because that's a, not as every lo- three months. That's as long as you can wear those clothes, and then they no, just no. Zara is actually child laborers come come and take Zara it. Is no, no, Zara is not. No, is not no then they fall apart. <laughs> that's like, H and M. No, Zara, Zara is exactly fast there. No, no, fast, no. <laughs> fast, <laughs> fast fashion. Yeah, okay. it's like guys, guys, guys. Medium. This is for audio listeners. Fast fashion. <laughs> Okay, no, but also Zara is not like that. So you need to Zara be smart exactly about. No, like no, 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 no. I have stuff from Zara which is over like twelve years old, and it's still. That's a you problem. No, that's not a me problem. That's a you problem because you're blaming Zara right now. But no, you need to be smart about it because Zara also manufactures in places like Turkey and Morocco and stuff where actually the quality of the product is really, really good. So the children are not working there. It's just teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. This is our last podcast, bro. We'll just go out swinging. <laughs> Again, I wonder why I'm here. To be fair, though, like, no. What do you think about child labors? No, no. That's what I. That's what, what I would say. See, I know. See, see. No, I, I'll give you an. Ex- I'll give you a thing, right? Hmm. Okay, I didn't just take it. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, you're against child labor. Yeah. No. Obviously. Okay, but I. I just have a question for you. Hmm. So there's a kid in Bangladesh mm. who has no way to earn money. He has no education. The only way he can make some money and support his family is if he works. In Why a is the kid having shop. to support the family in the first Because place? Because the whole economy is fucked. His father is not working. Maybe he's a drunkard. His mother might be I don't know working somewhere and getting minimum wage. The child who's ten years old has to support the family and has to bring something. To and the he's table. not going to school anyway. And he's not going to school anyway because. There no, are people th- like that this. requires a systemic change. The government has to do way more for That's that. A, no, can I finish my question? Mm. So this, so is he going? To, him going to Nike is that a bad thing? And working there? <laughs> yeah. Because what will his pr- future prospects be if yeah, he's just a factory worker? Be realistic. No, I no, am no. trying. This to is the no, same no. motherfucker who <laughs> said <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm on his side because. Uh, fuck! I f- because of that, fuck you. I forgot what my point was. I'm not on his side anymore. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. See, you have to blame the system. Yeah, uh, I, I so, am blaming the system. Yeah, hundred percent. But not buying from. You have to blame the government, not the uh, people who are profiting off of. Uh, I'm not blaming yeah, the government. They're, they're, ex- they're exploiting a loophole in the system. No, no, no. See, that's what with that question that he posed. It wasn't about blaming the companies. It was about whether that child should be working in the oh, factory the or not. The child shouldn't be working. No, no, that no, no that's, that's not the question. question. No, that's not the question. You said you were question. on his side. See, you, in every it's question, there's a, yeah, it is situa- There is a there is a realism to it. Context. Ideally, yes, a five year old child or a ten year old child shouldn't be working. He should be going to school and he should, he should be having a nice life and he should come back and he should play games and whatever. But in an unrealist, I mean, in a realistic world where the kid has to provide for his family, whatever, then. him going to a factory and working that's just real life right you can't you can't it's not nike's problem or h&m's problem i don't that's what i'm saying i don't think it's the company's problem i think the government needs to in, like sort of make more systemic changes okay. so, so you're, so you're like against people who say let's not buy from nike anymore let's not buy from H&M. i buy from nike i can't be against that that's right yeah. just cuz the system's fucked we can't say i'm literally wearing zara like, to head to toe just cuz the system's fucked we can't be like it's fine no and also i'm sorry but like Affordable clothing is so like hard to now, like I mean afford. Yeah. <laughs> no, like as in like okay, I want to support like homegrown like designers and stuff, but I don't think I can afford to spend like ten thousand bucks for one dress. And that too, it's not like a yeah, occasion. Yeah, but maybe that is more where... expensive because they're not using child laborers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> genuinely, I'm not gonna say, man. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good. Uh... Yo, maybe they are they are they are doing Balusekar, everything the right Balusekar. way. Yeah, but I still can't afford it. So, so what am I supposed so, to do? Am so I then not supposed then to? Then you're okay clothes? with child labor? Clothes. I'm not okay with it. I told you, my problem is that it's a systemic problem. Clothes on your back be or child labor? Obviously. What? <laughs> clothes on your back. That, See, either, either, either you have great clothes every three months you can buy on your Zara sale, no, and I, child ch- ch- children are working, 
or children are not working and no, you no, go no. to a See, you go to a, you you go to a slow fashion home grown brand where you spend 15 yeah, yeah, yeah. on if the government is willing to pay me money so i can afford 10000 bucks i'm okay with it but you are the government shaman i'm not you the have the, <laughs> 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 this, the conversation is making no sense absolutely okay. zero okay, sense okay 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 i just wanted to say something it's time for a break guys <laughs> <laughs> we will be right back <laughs> in the last segment we touched on like indian streetwear and indian brands and yeah you can't shell out 10k on yeah like don't you think like even like men's fashion has become increasingly expensive no but i have a doubt why do you think that is i don't know why is it becoming more expensive i guess no the, no, no i agree see, i agree with her like for example at niko bar plain white kurta will be like 9000 i'll tell you why i basic is because the cost of production is high because the material used is really good it's not a one wear situation thing right like it's on like h&m t-shirt where you'll have holes in it after 2 days right it lasts you a while it's something that you can keep in your wardrobe for a good like 10 15 years uh, which i think should be like a general like rule of thumb when you're running a clothing company right you don't want people i mean i guess for their profits it doesn't make sense but i feel like it's just insane because the amount of waste that is created when you have to constantly like churn out clothes and throw it out of your wardrobe just because it's defective is insane like yeah so i have a doubt so would you have a few really great pieces of clothing which will last you a long time but obviously you can't buy a lot of it because it's expensive yeah. but it lasts you a long time or do you prefer to have like h&m clothes which will fucking get so tattered in like 3 months but you can keep buying a lot more of it mm-hmm. personally speaking i would prefer the first scenario um because a i'm not someone who pays that much attention to how they dress like you will always see me repeating clothes like i have no like qualms about that um to comfort for me is a very big factor i feel like the the fast fashion houses don't really pay attention to like the indian weather like the material that you'll see in an h&m or a zara will always be like polyester basic etc which is not breathable right mm. so i don't like for me i would rather like again like i said if i could afford it i would always buy like the more expensive durable clothes but at some point you need to have that sort of analysis in your mind also right i can't like i budget like for instance like i'm a big budget person so i have a budget for every month how much i want to spend on different things clothes is like the lowest in that hierarchy of things and i try to also shop only when there's discount season me too uh yeah right <laughs> i feel like i was speaking to someone who was not even listening to me because sharad has no idea he doesn't know when a discount is on he will and he, for you it's like an insult if you shop during discount <laughs> what sort of insult Why? i never needed a discount like how dare it <laughs> defective goods yeah but yeah so personally i would much rather have fewer clothes but more durable clothes and i also believe in like passing things down like to the next generation and stuff like i when i open the cupboard and i see my grandmom's like you know sarees and stuff i feel like really attached to that piece of clothing so i feel like that's what i personally would like to practice but can't can't wait for this generation's girls to pass on their h&m crop tops to their daughters <laughs> see now they they won't be able to that's the thing so <laughs> <laughs> That's a clippable moment. But what guys. do you think? Like, no, since no, you're the I, only let's, let's other not, fashionable no, person, we, we, on we touched on we touched on uh, Shetta loving to <laughs> pay for goods. Uh, uh, can we get it on the story? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> for a man who only wears jerseys, this is really heartbreaking. Yeah, in the past three episodes, uh, you've seen him wear only jerseys. Yeah. And we have a little story about that. Fine, you want to take this? <laughs> <laughs> so, SN Seven, Sharan Nair Seven is the biggest Ronaldo fanboy. in kochi maybe kerala maybe india okay and as we all know ronaldo moved to al nasser january finished by the way uh, <laughs> fuck you <laughs> fuck you go back But to miami sharan being the enthusiastic jersey collector he was decided to get an al nasser jersey how did that go sharan I really don't want to talk about this. I feel like I this podcast is for talking. I If you can ask this about podcast. atom bombs and child labor, you can talk about al nasser jersey. <laughs> so guys, uh, for the longest time, my, like. I remember the first jersey I ever got was a Giggs jersey. This is in 2001 I think my mom got me the jersey and I didn't know about any of the clubs. So the so only you- reason I support Manchester United is because my mom happened to get me that specific jersey. So if she had yeah, so if she had got me an Arsenal jersey or a Chelsea nobody gives a fuck about Chelsea. <laughs> But like yeah, if one of those other jerseys then I would support that club. And for the longest time I thought Giggs was Jigs. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I didn't know this is this Welsh guy who who plays on the wing from uh, United, and uh, then I was a huge. Uh, so for the longest time in my life, I would only have United jerseys. Uh, I would think that as a supporter, I shouldn't wear any other jersey because you know. If I would wear another jersey, United would feel hurt. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like breaking the code. United uh, would feel hurt because a little boy in Kochi. Karavandra. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, so like my love for that went from gigs to Beckham. I was a huge Beckham fan, and then I remember I remember crying when I was maybe eleven or twelve years old when Beckham left for Real Madrid. because i was like that he's the greatest number 7 player in the history of the sport and then nothing is ever going to replace him and i still remember sitting in my grandmom's house uh, everybody was having lunch this is sometime around august and i'm watching a united game against bolton and there is this really ugly looking guy with like weird hair number 7 ronaldo on his back really fucked skinny teeth. <laughs> <laughs> fucked up teeth <laughs> hey, hey, like, <laughs> fucked up teeth is fine <laughs> and i'm like who the fuck is this guy like becker was so good at football and he was so beautiful also <laughs> and then uh, i can hear these guys eating and then suddenly this guy comes and the next 20 minutes was the most entertaining piece of football i've ever watched in my life like i was off the off the sofa how old were you I don't know, maybe like two thousand five, maybe around twelve, thirteen years old, mm. uh, pretty young, and uh, and ever since that day, I've been a Ronaldo fan, and uh, when he went to Real Madrid, I broke my tradition and I bought my first other jersey and cheated on United. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking whore! <laughs> and then I realized that you know what I love. Uh, like recently, I've realized that I love collecting jerseys, which have meaning. So, for example, uh, Barcelona is a terrible club, uh, mm-hmm. and I have. So, Fahim supports Barcelona just for context, guys. <laughs> and I have the jersey where uh, when Barcelona got thrashed by Bayern, I have that specific jersey. Oh, you bought it them. before they got thrashed, though. No, no, no. The, I got the it. The Champions League. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When they got smashed by Bayern, mm. I have that. Which time? The second time or the first time? All the time. Two thousand fifteen. The Alfonso Davis one. Okay. Two thousand. Not the two thousand. This is the this is the Czech one. Ah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I have I have jerseys like I try to collect jerseys and so it's very hard to would do. Would you collect a Man City jersey? No. So I uh, oh so there is certain rules to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. So as a United fan, I cannot have I cannot wear a City jersey. I cannot wear an Arsenal jersey. I cannot wear a Chelsea jersey. Liverpool, bro. I cannot wear a Liverpool jersey. That's all. Those are my direct competitors. Okay. So okay. I don't mind. No, no <laughs> direct <laughs> competitors. Leads, I don't mind because they're not successful. So I don't. <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Right. So no direct competitors means only in the EPL. Only in the EPL, because yeah, United okay. is my first love. So I, I have, I'm going to get an Atletico Madrid jersey soon. Like there was a time when I used to support. Like so, I also support. So without, as I support United, I also support every club which Ronaldo plays for. Correct. So I did support Real Madrid for a while, mm. and then Juventus, and then. Allah sir no. So wait, are you a United <laughs> fan first or a Ronaldo fan first? Oh, that is a, such a tough question. He is a Ronaldo fanboy. I swear, when United I wasn't love, doing I well, love, I love Ronaldo more than anything. When so United yeah. wasn't doing well, he wouldn't mention United at <laughs> all. Stop watching. Yeah, yeah. he Stop wouldn't watching. even watch football. Yeah. <laughs> because why? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. only talk about Ronaldo. I stopped watching. Because if you can't win, fair. then what's the point of watching? Okay, okay continue. <laughs> so Al Nasser. Yeah. So so, so finally, <laughs> finally, he lands up in Al Nasser. And uh, I'm like, this is a piece of history. First time such a big player is going to Saudi, and Saudi is pumping in so much money. So it's a so I see it as piece of history, right? So like the f- like obviously Al Nasser is signed to Nike now, so they're going to have Nike jerseys on this season. But before that, Al Nasser was signed to some random fucking I don't know company, and I wanted to get that piece of history, that <laughs> one jersey. Uh, so three months back, I uh, your story is also historic. Just FYI. three months back, I was on the internet and I searched for uh, Cristiano Ronaldo Al Nasser jersey, and then I went on this site, and the site was like it looked great, and I looked <laughs> at all the jerseys, and I found the Ronaldo one, and it said it is some eleven thousand rupees, which was expensive, but I was like, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Ah, he saw, no! you he saw, yeah. he saw, he saw Shall two options. Even know this? He saw two <laughs> options. Oh my god! There were two options. Normal replica jersey, eighty euros, eight k rupees, and there was the player authentic of version. Course, of course, one hundred and ten euros, eleven thousand rupees. First of all, a Nike Barcelona jersey costs four k for the replica, maybe seven thousand for the yeah. like the player one. Yeah. This guy thought Al Nasser's jersey starts at eight k, and he was like, "Fuck it, 
I'm That's Ronaldo. Let me get the authentic <laughs> one. He paid 11k for an Al Nasser jersey. Yeah, I paid Which, 11k for an Al Nasser hmm. jersey, and then it said uh, 10 days delivery, and I, I, so I was supposed to go from Riyadh to Sharjah because I was getting it delivered to Sharjah, and then it, uh, I waited for 10 days. It didn't come. I emailed them a couple of times. No response. Then I waited for one month. I waited for two months, and no response. And I was getting it. So I thought maybe Saudi. is not very good at online <laughs> delivery <laughs> they haven't called they're out they're they're like, you know they're making <laughs> strides but they're like this they're still figuring out this thing so maybe you know customer service is not that great it's not india and then i put up a story one day because i was so tired and i really wanted this jersey so i put up a story so how many days later after you placed the order 3 months later 90 days 90 days, days. Yeah. so also the the site mentioned that delivery could take from i didn't go there initially but at the site mentioned 10 to 90 days oh, which okay, is weird exact 90 days <laughs> 90 days to deliver from fucking riyadh i could walk from riyadh to sharjah with this month we almost no no yeah, yeah i'm coming there <laughs> so i was frustrated and i i i knew there would be some followers of mine in saudi so i i put up a story saying hey guys anybody in saudi please help me out i would like for one of you to go to the store and like get my jersey and keep it and i'll take it one day So I put up the story and a lot of people responded and there was a girl who responded saying uh, after like 10 minutes of talking to her and explaining to her why I need this jersey she said like, uh, buddy I think the site is fake <laughs> <laughs> and me being who I am was very offended and <laughs> I was like this girl doesn't know anything uh, fuck this uh, I'll just have to talk to somebody else <laughs> uh, and then she text and I stopped opening her messages and then she texted me again saying uh, yeah my friend bought a jersey and this is definitely not the site So when she sent me that second message I I started thinking so I went on the site I went on the site and the first red flag was the first thing which was written on the site is by the way if you search for this jersey the first site which comes Don't try to justify it Wait wait how about the first red flag being that it's 80 euros I thought it was you thought Al Nasser was what made of gold, gold. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't think he didn't think clearly Okay go on go on go so on So the first red flag was the on the side it's written we deliver to almost 80 countries <laughs> <laughs> who says almost 80 countries 79 and a half <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> might okay, be that was Pakistan. the first red flag then they had an instagram uh, icon and a facebook icon so i was like okay i can at least go complain on the oh by the way in between all this i'm messaging the aldasa team also on instagram <laughs> so guys my jersey <laughs> del ronaldo is there <laughs> <laughs> also ps <laughs> and i clicked the instagram icon and it opens up to an account which has 3 followers <laughs> <laughs> at 500 following and it says alnasser underscore fc and it's some some i don't know some random page and that's when i realized it's fake guys you know how we can scam him right create another fake account for alnasser <laughs> what you said what happened and i was heartbroken i was heartbroken firstly because i didn't get the jersey secondly because i knew how my friends would react and they are ha- look how happy they are <laughs> they never looked so happy collectively <laughs> fahi was fahi was screaming uh, can you also talk about the terms and conditions on the website and how it was just copy pasted from oh it was copy pasted from some other some industrial website yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just copy pasted our jcbs may not work <laughs> Yeah, like, there was actually something like no correlation with jerseys and what they were talking about so so then you know i don't take no for an answer so i hey 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 i don't take no for an answer in such thing fahim cut this part out uh so i searched for the i so this girl sent me the real uh, real mm. website And you know, I was not really wrong. The real website looked trash compared to the that doesn't matter <laughs> compared to the yeah, website which this guy like created. HTML, CSS. Yeah. Don't so, try to justify so, it. <laughs> so what did I do? I went and bought a second jersey, which has also price, not reached. The prices <laughs> made more sense. Yeah, the price. Yeah, this real jersey is only five thousand rupees. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the real jersey, five thousand rupees. You got it? No, no, real jersey. No, no. I I bought it. Ronaldo seven in the back. It was supposed to deliver to Sharjah. And the second time it didn't get delivered. Wait, what's the update on this one? <laughs> There's no update. So it went to Sharjah. Yeah. And for some reason, Aramix couldn't see the the correct Address. location, and they tried to call Avzar or they tried to call me, and apparently the call never went through. So they sent it back to Saudi. <laughs> so you had to pay for the uh, courier twice? No. So I emailed Saudi again. I emailed Arna sir, please, guys, you don't understand. It is a mistake. It's an Listen, honest mistake. Listen, you know mistake. how that Dolan guy gave up. <laughs> 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 I think it's time. <laughs> and they, res- I sent them two emails. They didn't respond. Third email, I sent them. They responded with no hello, no hi, nothing. <laughs> hello. I mean, they didn't say. Uh, they said customer. 
Thank you for reaching out. We will speak to the delivery agent and we'll find out what happened. Full stop. Oh, so they replied. They replied. They never found out though. <laughs> <laughs> it's been three days, no response. But we're sure this one's legit. This one is legit. So if they don't deliver it, I will go to fucking Saudi and get this jersey. At this point, I feel like that's the only way you'll get this jersey. <laughs> Let's trip to Saudi. <laughs> bro, we got to watch like one of the games. The atmosphere is crazy, bro. Have you watched one bro, of the Al-Nasir games? Bro, also bro. looked so rigged. No, bro. When Ronaldo is taking a free kick, they're like chanting Messi. No, the fans are really passionate. No, the fans, yeah. But like so many of his goals look very rigged to me. No, Ronaldo's no, goals? No, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> the keeper's no. moving out of the way. <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. No. Genuinely. Yeah, because like, he wants to tell his... Bali, some clips here. He wants, to, he wants to tell his grandkids that fucking Ronaldo scored against him. <laughs> Yeah, so he's moving out of the way. No, <laughs> fair. That actually makes sense also. Isn't it better to tell your grandkids that I saved the goal? That also <laughs> that is Ronaldo makes sense. Shot? <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that makes sense. But let's talk about this rise of Saudi League football, right? So basically, the private investment fund of Saudi, they've actively... So the same... Invested well, yeah, the Wait, same, but the same group... They is, have a lot of money, right? What have they done for Palestine? <laughs> <laughs> what did they start a club there? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, basically, they Al-Hamas. have heavily invested in these four clubs. PSG? No, in Saudi. Okay. So, Al-Akhli, Al-Hilal, Al-Nasser and Al-Ithiyad. And these four clubs are heavily funded. And now they're competing with European big boys. When they signed Ronaldo, I was like, okay, Ronaldo's not really a good footballer anymore. It's fine. Then they signed the current Ballon d'Or winner. They get Benzema. Then they signed Kante. Then they signed new young players like Ruben Neves who are at their peak. So... I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think like this represents like a turning point for football, world football as a whole? Because right now it's very European centric. Do you think Saudi could be the hub of football in like the next 10 years? Because when you think about it, football goes where the money is, right? Players from Brazil, 16 years old, moving to Europe because that's where the money is. Do you think Saudi could actually give competition to Europe in 10 years time? I think, I think yes. And I think it's also great that the power doesn't lie just with Europe. Uh, and, but in the past can, other countries have tried this like Russia tried it for a while then China tried it for a while but I think just the amount of sheer money which uh, which Saudi operates East, with yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's on a different scale so I think so, so what is Saudi like what, the richest country in the world is they're easily up there see the thing is for example China there. is a very rich and powerful country right but like the Chinese president is not sitting and watching football and saying, you know what, I want to develop football in such a way. <laughs> the Saudis, I guess, are just like, they have time to spend on such and things. And they have the whole flip now. Yeah, they're they, really yeah. focusing on tourism. Like, and they, like, yeah. yeah. And it's well, not just football. That city that they're they're investing yeah. in golf. Uh, they have a lot of the big boxing fights. Oh, they have fights. bought golf. Yeah. And they have a lot of the big they boxing have, fights there. For example, golf is owned by the Saudis. So they wanted to start a separate league. And then I think the the actual golf PGA PGA whatever yeah. they just like they were against it, but then they got bought over. So now <laughs> the Saudis own golf. No, it's also <laughs> a direct link to tourism, right? The more sporting events you have in your country, the more people and the more inflow and all of that. Yeah. But I have a question. Um, so when you talk about football, do you think the fans play a very important role as well in making the sport what it is? Because in that case, don't you think European fans are like the best fans out there? I think Saudi genuinely has like no, really passionate yeah, fans I from what I've seen. I think Saudi has great fans. And I, when we talk like locally, like Kerala, we've seen ISL games, we've seen the the fan fair, stand. Yeah. The, the support is there and the quality of football is nowhere close. Hmm. Like realistically speaking. I feel like just too and much. You have the opposite also. Like Parisian fans are like... Yeah, they they sent uh, Hernandez like yeah. a thing saying your masses. So yeah, you, you they're know, like, really into yeah, it. Like, so the yeah, like there's are both really. ends. Like there are assholes, but what remains, whether they are assholes or good people, is that passion. Regarded that, it's a part of their life. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. Will that sort of passion also be present? It can in be bought. No, I think that's what no, it can I, be bought. I think that passion exists in the Middle East for football. It definitely it exists. does, but it can also be bought. How like do you, you buy, can buy passion like that? Like, like it's it, something that you need to feel from within that attachment. It's right? soft power. Why does a kid in Cochin Kadwantra care about uh, Manchester United? Because a p- certain player uh, uh, plays there. A certain kind of atmosphere. There's a certain kind of community. That community can be bought. I mean, that's how that's how soft power works. So I feel like Saudi definitely in the next 10 years, it has to be consistent. If they have this much money to burn for the next 20 years, I feel like, yeah, Saudi would be the the top league. But if they don't have that kind of stamina, it's all, I think it's about stamina. So one of the criticisms they're facing is, so as I said, the PA, the same fund has invested in the top four teams. Mm. So it's not decentralized per se. Yeah, like in the Premier League, you have different such, owners. Yeah. So it seems like they've 
creating like an artificial competition yeah. when it's the same group that's investing yeah. in four different teams that's easy to it's easy to fix how, the results of such a league like, you for, like it's easy to fix the FIFA. results like, it's like and i uh, oh, like they fixed the world cup <laughs> what yeah like argentina, average ronaldo fan argentina should have never won the world cup every they time they outplayed fell, every single every team messi that they fell, played every time messi fell a penalty like bro there was that penalty against poland which bro which he you missed know, which he which, missed yeah, he missed he on knew, purpose he knew it was he knew it was he knew the qatar is giving but penalty. every other pen was legit argentina <laughs> played better than every single team they played against uh, yeah. messi gave two world class assists minus all the goals he was running every single game yeah, ronaldo he's a footballer he's supposed to run bro no running <laughs> the game basic. bro <laughs> running the game he doesn't run to be honest <laughs> <laughs> he meant he was like the orchestrator. No, but no, Ronaldo no, is know, never touching the World Cup. Let's, no, let's I know. I know what Qatar did. Qatar is like we are getting the World Cup the first time in the Middle East. This is our one opportunity. Let's make it as memorable as it is for all the people. So, in are the you world. saying if Ronaldo won, it wouldn't have been as powerful? See, Ronaldo is not a likable guy. So mm. he's, a, he's a, a pe- bad guy. Yeah, he's, he's a, a bad, bad guy. guy. So but for men, Messi wins. Everybody, it's a endearing story, guy. Uh, from fucking Rosario comes and conquers the world Guy and he's a very nice mild autism. humble and he has childhood sweetheart <laughs> yeah, family yeah. so it's a very nice packet story so the qataris are like like you're never going to f- forget the 2022 world cup yeah they paid the france players to miss the penalties yeah that's what you're saying no I, no it's not about the it, france players france players tried their best to win it they it played just, garbage for 80 minutes just, argentina yeah, was uh, running all over 80 them. minutes right but a football game last i heard was 90 minutes yeah and then but it went to also, penalties see, and they uh, won tournament football tournaments are also about momentum uh, argentina had that momentum of every match there would be it's not about, it's not about match fixing like oh they have to win this match but there are slight nudges towards yeah, it certain things in their favor only game they like outplayed the, the opponent was uh, Poland. Croatia and, and Poland. in such oh, yeah that I, i'm not even counting i think in such a high stakes sport even a hair of mental fortitude can play a huge role in how the game goes yeah, but, but which I mean, team but looked like they were going to beat argentina like st- from the get go uh, until every the, team bro they was no, they suck ass France, 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 Yeah but it's not oh, about but is, it's not about throughout the game is, right at the end yeah, of the day yeah at the end of the day they won the, the world like, cup 90 yeah which is what the qataris is what? It, <laughs> even in 3022 you want that one moment and everybody will talk if mbappe won the world cup a second time nobody is going to talk about 2002 i mean 2022 qatar world cup yeah it is the france of favorites yeah now that messi has won it you will always remember it when i'm 90 years old if i lived like that the long i will remember world cup. Yeah. so you want to talk about ronaldo's offside goals in the champions league against bayern against all bro, the other teams you don't remember any of that the greatest missed the champions podcast. league <laughs> bro can you imagine he scored two offside can, goals can in the ima- same game can you imagine the lack of mentality barcelona team in the 2010s early 2010s the greatest i still remember When Ronaldo, Ronaldo won two no, no, La Ligas in here. eight years. I'm supporting you here. When Ronaldo moved to Barcelona and I saw that Barcelona team, I'm like, mother fuck. We will yeah. never beat them. Chavi, They are uh, invincible. Uh, and then you know what Real Madrid did? They won four Champions League in 10 years. How many La Ligas? Four. Who cares about the La Liga, bro? A 38-game season requires... Barcelona pays referees. Requi- every, 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 they don't have money This because they pay. This guy's copium is insane. <laughs> they, every, every time Barca wins, it's the referee. Every time... Mid- Ronaldo scored two offside goals in the same semi-final game. Which against? Against What? Bayern. Are okay. you not talking okay. about this? I am talking. You are talking about it. Why should I talk? <laughs> Why are you just ignoring it? <laughs> okay, so a football so, game will have decisions go on either side. That happens, but you can't deny the fact that Messi is a World Cup winner. Ronaldo is not, and probably will never win the World Cup. He no, probably shouldn't have. Lo- he's played twenty twenty six World Cup. He got <laughs> benched. He. Can we talk about uh, <laughs> Ronaldo's 100% uh, 100% playing the 2026 World Cup he's even if he comes in win. a wheelchair he's he not going to win if Ronaldo yeah, wins the World Cup he's not going to win but he's yeah. going to play that's why <laughs> <laughs> participation sort of <laughs> he's definitely not winning because it takes a team not Fuck a single you, player <laughs> But two La Ligas in 8 years so suck my I dick I support yeah, f- United how can you league. not win the league because you won five champions league champions league is all the best clubs in the world Madrid playing Madrid won four huh Madrid won four four in how many years in five years okay and then two years later again they won <laughs> <laughs> are you 
but they that couldn't game, even that, beat that season that season when ronaldo wasn't even see, there against city a knockout a knockout a knockout tournament has more luck involved than a league fixture no it's all more luck it's more mentality yes. when, are you saying when, there's no luck involved there's luck in involved knockout in everything. football there's luck involved okay in but in a in a league format when it's a 38 game season the best team <laughs> ends up winning that's why guardiola the best manager in the world always so wins the league so you're saying in the knockouts the best team doesn't end up winning no the best team doesn't always end exactly. up winning exactly <laughs> so argentina still the what okay so you take away the champions league you take away the world right cup back, you check at the leagues <laughs> you check at the leagues messi has won 12 league titles in his career how much has ronaldo won If you all are done with your fight, can we <laughs> yeah. talk about me now? <laughs> I won. I won. You want to apologize? Oh my God! Okay, before we, we start again, so <laughs> apologize for winning. Oh my God! <laughs> Twelve league titles. Okay, go on. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, I started watching football because I had a crush on one guy, and is it Beckham? <laughs> no, no, no. On a human being that is not a football player. <laughs> He was in my school, and he oh. was a big football fan. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You generally thought it was Beckham. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Everybody no. had a crush on Beckham. Yeah, everybody had a crush on Beckham, but I didn't watch football because of Beckham. <laughs> I watched it for someone who was not as good looking. But anyway, so I started watching because this person had a. Uh, he was a big football like enthusiast, and he used to support United. So that's how I ended up supporting United. uh and i also really like ronaldo because i was born on 7th i am born on 7th may and he wears the number like jersey number 7 so that's how like i started liking ronaldo um but yeah that's it there's not much to the story <laughs> who's this boy i can't tell you <laughs> <laughs> so did you also start playing or yeah yeah so i used to play all sports okay not just like football i used to play like badminton i used to play tennis i used to like do track and field uh throw ball handball football all of it and i mean that's exactly how sharan and i also met um cuz i used to play football in like and where i stay volleyball. in cochin no and yes she was the only girl who used to come play football yeah and he would try to impress me with these I these like, like you know, uh, this footwork and all you know of that and i'm like i'm not interested when the girls are watching when, play when the bad bitches come yeah, watch when the bitches are watching <laughs> <laughs> no but i used to always so i thought i thought i, I thought always so, the, so the first time she came i thought okay i just had to put up performance once but she came every day bro <laughs> ronaldo would perform <laughs> he would perform <laughs> but uh, no so i used to play i would not sit and watch on the sidelines i used to play football and my brother was also there so we so he used to come visit because your his cousin was in the same building as us and my brother and sharan really hit it off um and abhishek had this thing where he would want to play with the the team that wasn't the best yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, sharan would not have that thing so sharan was always the opposite <laughs> so abhishek's team abhishek's logic is her brother's logic abhishek's logic was that you pick a weaker team and then try win yeah <laughs> and this was great for me because i would pick the stronger team in this <laughs> yeah and i was invariably goalie in the team opposite my brother okay so my brother would always and he would not even try to score when it was like him in front of me he would just want to hit me with the ball <laughs> <laughs> so i was just like trying to save with all my life and abhishek is just aiming for me he's not aiming for the goal but yeah that's how we met and uh, yeah. yeah the rest is history Yeah, we are here now sitting yeah, in a podcast room. <laughs> He's actually dressed the way he used to dress back yeah. then also. Technically, we also met through football. Yeah. What really? Yeah, it's quite like, uh, at a pickup game. Yeah. Aryan Nair introduced me to Aryan. First Nair. of all, we are in India, in Kerala. There's no pickup game. What is a pickup bro, game? Turf. It's not a pickup game. Bro, turf. <laughs> it's not a pickup game. It's turf. Yeah, it's turf. Pickup game, game means like nobody's paying. Hey, bro, nobody's you want to come play? No pickup. I thought pickup game was like when you just play. You're not in Brooklyn. No, no, yeah, but uh, pickup game is more like nobody's paying. It's not like a rented out field. I don't pay. Oh. <laughs> okay. So cup game for him. <laughs> <laughs> you were just there <laughs> and then you started playing. So wait, what is your first interaction like? He, he said something really funny when we were playing. He said some shit and I was like, "Oh shit." And usually I'm the guy who says loud random shit like I'll moan or something when uh, like I I trash talk a lot and I distract the opposition with my linguistic abilities. Cuz there's no skill actually. Yeah, there's there's no, no other skill. The lack yeah. of skill is compensated for. Yeah, I've seen Fahim play football. It's fucking atrocious. Kimera bobo, kimera bobo. Anda pasa bobo. I feel like we've broken him. <laughs> so yeah, so we had gone for a Neymar five Red Bull Championship in Delhi, where like the best uh, five team of uh, five team 
come and play in Delhi for from each state, yeah. From each state, yeah. And then we had the opportunity as content creators to play the best team there. And then we saw how Fahim played, and it was just. So I was going for the content. I was doing flicks, <laughs> back heels, no, no, all no, of that. The, Same. Okay, <laughs> that I I I I agree. Maybe he was just going for the content. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, but that day we came back to the hotel and we were all sitting in the hotel. <laughs> and this Agrim. is a bit I've never used. Agrim, who has never played football in his life, <laughs> destroyed Fahim. <laughs> destroyed Fahim, and you know, <laughs> Fahim Fahim could have diverted it by just playing it cool, but no, Fahim's mood was off after that. Like he, it, he felt that he <laughs> went on a ten-minute monologue. Yeah, But what did he say? I missed this. And he's good with words, so it's like good insults. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine insults an overweight you. individual insulting oh, you. Oh, oh, so you're now fat shaming also? Yes. When he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> yeah, he'll comment. <laughs> <laughs> he'll like observe, com- observe comment the script. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. these people when they come on the podcast, they would just go off. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers! <laughs> Do you ever were you ever scared of uh, like playing with boys? No, I was never. Actually, I feel like I was because I was scared of playing with. Boys. I was never scared because see, <laughs> I've grown up with a brother, right? Like, so I have like Abhishek was not the most caring brother okay. out there. Like he would. <laughs> What the no, no, slander no. on he all the people who are not here on this podcast? He would feed me when I asked him for food. No, so Abhishek and I are what two and a half years apart. So, <laughs> like, it's not like you know when you're really far apart in age, then you have more of a like okay that person's like a child, like you want to care for them. Abhishek and I were two and a half years apart, so we're like friends only. But he would watch all these WWE uh, like episodes and just try those move on me- moves on me, okay? And it was like I literally had stitches. Like there are literal stitches over here because he's like picked me up and thrown me on the corner of the bed and everything. And I don't ask me where my parents were, but <laughs> this has happened, okay? So and then I really like I put on a lot of weight. And Abhishek and started, remained like lean and thin. He started eating all his food, by the way. Like I've heard her parents say this. He couldn't choke slam you after that. <laughs> no, he couldn't. He was actually he used to hit me and run really fast because he knew if I got a hold of him, I would sit on him, and that would be it. <laughs> But he used to, and the most annoying thing, okay, he would, I would be sitting and like doing my homework or whatever, watching TV or something. He would do this tapli, okay, on the back of your head like this. Okay, the most annoying thing that you can do to a very peaceful human being who's just involved in their own work. Who just eats a bit much. That's it. Yeah, yeah dude, I had a problem. I used to wake up early just so I could go into the like the kitchen, open the fridge, have that ice cream, go back to sleep without anyone knowing. Okay, so you know what used to happen? We were allowed to have chocolate like once a month. Okay, and so I would go and buy like dairy, dairy milk or munch or Twix or whatever, and Abhishek would buy his thing. I wouldn't wait. I would eat it the same day, maybe that same moment. <laughs> Abhishek would wait, look forward to having it, like maybe like two, three weeks that's into so the month. That's so fucked up. No, that's so crazy. So fucked up, right? So I would not let Why, him have that opportunity. Why the guy wanted to wait and then fucked <laughs> up? Yeah, like how could you just wait? Like so, you know it's there, or yeah, you always exactly. know it's there. So I knew it was there. I would wake up in the morning, have his chocolate, and I know he's have not going to have his gonna, chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I know he's not going to have it for like at least another ten days. So I would take the wrapper, put stones. <laughs> <laughs> And then you ask, Fold it. and then she's asking, "Why did he do WWE?" <laughs> Blame it on Munch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would do that. I would fold it and put it back in the fridge. So for every time he opened the fridge for the two weeks that he thought, yeah, he'll it see was, it. Then. He'd still look forward to it. But then eventually, at the end of it, he'd have only. You stone. deserve that choke slam, yeah, man. You deserve every RK choke slam. So Shadjita, uh, Shadjita used to do the do some do, like WWE moves and everything, and this uh, one time. Then he started doing. He started creating his own moves. He's a very creative guy, <laughs> and he had this choke slam move hmm. where he choke slam me and pick me up by the butt at the same time <laughs> and just like throw me. And I was like a fat kid and he was like yeah. skinny, and he called it the mangoo sage. <laughs> yeah. mango I don't know why it was called the mangoo sage. The mangoo switch. <laughs> the mangoo switch. No, the mango switch. Oh, like that's what it was. Yeah. I thought it was what really Swedish. Mean? I thought it was like. <laughs> no, I it was like Russian. What does it mean? <laughs> so I thought it was uh, the Ice Age, or like. So I thought it was like the Mongoose Age <laughs> for the no, longest time. No, no. This is mango switch. Mango switch. Yeah. And does so, mango mean mango only? Yeah. yeah okay. And uh, so he would keep doing. He'd, he'd come to me like once a week, and he'd be like, "Come, mango switch." And we're like, "No, no, 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 Sharu, I don't want to do it. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, like this, we'd he'd like we'd have a tussle. Balu has seen this happen many times. Balu has seen this. He's turned from GTA 5, 4, looked, and then gone back. I'd be like, I'd be like, Balchana, please. 
<laughs> and and then Bal is like it's better that happens to you than me. <laughs> it reached a point where he'd be like uh Aryan Mangusuch. I'd be like okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Take <laughs> me. <laughs> you know the flip side of this? So me and Aryan don't fight very often. Hmm. But nowadays if we ever fight. He can do it to you. No no no. no. <laughs> he has no interest in verbal confrontation. <laughs> If I am standing here and he is standing here and we are fighting before I know it he will be here oh. <laughs> in my face the last time this is one week back we had a fight like this he was on my like in my face and he's yelling at me yeah even i don't know about this fight yeah, what he's happened he's right here and i was so honest i said bro i have no interest in physics <laughs> <laughs> Damn! He got you me. really think I will hit you now? Do no, I will not? I have no interest. And, and so I please, like, he, I can't even breathe because he's that close to me. So I was like, please step back and have a conversation. But he just wanted to mangoose with you. <laughs> yeah, it was In my your head, turn. I was like, Why did I say this? <laughs> yeah. As a kid, what the fuck? This was, was an like option. Yeah. <laughs> We can say no. <laughs> Yeah, growing up with elder siblings is something. Yeah. yeah. Same. How's how's it been with you? Yeah, it's the same. So my brother and I, we were obsessed with WWE as oh, well. Oh yeah. So Who was your favorite player, by the way? Player. I mean wrestler. wrestler. <laughs> Undertaker. Triple H. Booker. Booker. Six one. This is midget. Yeah. Ray Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I used to like those brothers. What are those? Those Kane Hardy brothers. Kane and Abel. Oh Abel. no, Jeff and, and Jeff, Jeff, Jeff and Matt. And Matt. Yeah, I used, I used to, like to love them. Jeff Hardy. And I Bro, used to like Triple H. Jeff Hardy had a brother? Yeah. yeah. Ed Hardy. Matt. Oh, Matt, <laughs> Matt Hardy. Who's Ed Hardy? Ed Hardy's a t-shirt. Oh, shit. Ed Hardy's a t-shirt. The t-shirts. The guy. I know he had a brother. Yeah. 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 One was a really good looker and a good performer. The other one was a really good wrestler. What That's how I remember about? them. Jeff Hardy and Jeff Matt Hardy. Jeff and Matt, yeah. He would do that uh, Jeff Hardy song. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like I used to initially think this when it, like you know back in the day we used to be on Yahoo Messenger. So if somebody comes online, their intro music should start so that you know that <laughs> person is online. Or if somebody is entering the field of play, their intro music should like. Uh, that's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Because well, before they are coming, you know who is coming. I used to be damn scared when uh, Undertaker's music yeah. used to come. That used to be my favorite. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know Undertaker's Dang. in an Indian movie? What in a you? Hindi movie, he's he's fighting against Akshay Kumar in this movie. Then let me guess, yeah. Akshay Kumar won. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's serious. That's for a new WWE's fan. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, you know, my favorite was Kane. I used to really Kane buy the story. Brother. Yeah, I know, and I used to oh, buy the story. He burned his face. You know, they're not they're not actual brothers. No, they're actual brothers. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he burnt I, his face I, in a fire, bro. Yeah, no, he did. He did. <laughs> Wasn't there one scary guy who used to eat worms or something? Yeah, bo- no? Boogeyman. Oh, Boogeyman. Oh, he was oh, the bureau man. Rakishi. Or Rikishi? No, nah, his his finisher. Yeah, the ass thing. Can uh, these people? The I don't thing? know. Like he would just sit on you, uh, on I'm your like, face with his ass. Yeah, he just shake his, his ass. Over. I wonder if they came up with that themselves or like they had managers they were, or like there was a creative team behind. Imagine a full grown adult. <laughs> yeah, I'll just like put my ass on his face. <laughs> <laughs> that I sounds I mean, yeah. like something. Yeah, what was seen as a finisher now is like a. Okay, Bro, you were still a finisher. <laughs> no, but my my favorite thing about WWE is the women. Oh, they were just. I never. They were so hot, bro. Bro. How? The attire. Uh, I don't know if it's like aerodynamics or something, but that shit worked. <laughs> so <laughs> WWE had these games, and I would always buy the latest game of WWE. Did and you I used to pay to watch. No, no, no they had a video game, game oh, on okay, the PlayStation, okay. and games, I would play yeah. a mixed tag team. So you could create your own character in <laughs> WWE. I'd create a Fahim. <laughs> I would team up with a diva of my liking, and in, in the end, my liking. and in the end, uh, when you win the game, they they make out, they like kiss. Your oh intrusive God. thoughts won, bro. <laughs> it was just me discovering myself. <laughs> wow, this we've gotten to know a lot about Fahim yeah, in this podcast. This. <laughs> Ryan Gosling, but Messi. But I believe this is no. This is the thing a lot of people in my generation used to do. Got What create, create your yeah, own avatar yeah, and make yeah, out, and then make out with the girl. It was like a, it was like a thing. Oh. It's like in GTA Five how you go to the strip club. The, the strip yeah. club serves no purpose except for Vanilla Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> the strip club's called Vanilla Unicorn. Oh, he yeah. knows the exact well, location. It's, really, it's a really cool name, I see. I know. As right? an adult, someone should run it. Nice. How? What? Three? No, no, no. Yeah. I was just like. No, no. Back to. Wait, what were we just talking about? W W W. So you were telling us about Abhishek. I already said. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. There was a topic that I wanted to ask you more about. Ah, playing football with boys. You told me about. Uh, you oh yeah, tell so me about I was never scared because I've grown up with a brother <laughs> and he's done these things to okay. me. Okay. I was always, you know, I feel like I've become more scared now. Like today, if you tell me go play football with these like guys, I'd be like, okay, yeah, no, I don't think it's my scene anymore. Back in the day, I was just like, throw the ball at me. Because here, these guys fine. used to play on like. Uh, fields of like sand and rocks and yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. So you guys were never afraid of that road. No, like, no, no, never. Injury no, or no, we were never afraid. I don't, we were not also <laughs> vain about it, right? It's not like if I have a scar, it will make a big difference. Dude, if you see my right like knee, like tetanus. Tetanus was just like every other. Samit. No, I mean You're I don't think we were scared. Yeah. I don't think at all. Like I was more happy to like win that point than like worry about where I'm getting hurt. Worry about tetanus. Because <laughs> as an adult, like I can't imagine playing on charcoal's ground. Yeah, that's what. As an adult, like when you're a child, you're always more fearless than when you're an adult. Yeah, yeah. we used to roll the charcoal. Like charcoal's ground has little pipes. Like charcoal's ground, you don't know. You should even if you don't know how to play football, but if you know how to play on that ground, then you're you're. Because the bounce is different. The way it the rolls. Yeah, it's actually the, a, it's actually skid, a tennis clay court. Where you know sometimes it'll hit a pipe and it'll go some other way. Then there's a net on top. So if you kick the ball in a certain way, if it touches the net, it's not a goal. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tennis clay court. Yeah, it's so a clay the, court. It, oh, yeah, what? it used to be a tennis court converted. No one played tennis in the end, so they converted it into a football wow, pitch. Man. Wow. So, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't think like I feel like we used to play rugby. What? Yeah, I not in Jakulas and like Kunur. Oh. I used to play rugby. There used to be like twenty of us kids, and twenty is a lot of people, in like a very small ground who used to just play rugby. So we used to like, like. So smash in Moscow, into it's really other. sick because uh, all these parks are public, so you nobody has to pay. Mm. You can pay oh, play it's just pickup games. Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's actual pickup games. There are proper fields for anybody to come at any time and play. So mm. during the summer, we play from like five in the evening to like eleven in the night, and the sun is still up because it's summer time there. Yeah. Was it like that in Doha? Do you have to like yeah, in organize Doha, pitches? We'd have uh, so we'd have a few public parks. So when we were in like fifth grade and sixth grade, we'd four p.m. Mia Park. Okay, fine. And then 
a few years down the line these parks started having like security guards because it was a, like families would come there to have picnics but then they'd get hit by a ball mm. so they had to crack down oh. on that so they would have security crack guards down on <laughs> goalkeepers huh you mean goalkeepers crack down on the goalkeepers <laughs> the poor quality of goalkeepers Uh, no the strikers would shoot the ball so oh, it hit a family right <laughs> it was me <laughs> <laughs> and basically uh, the, the security guards would start patrolling agrim was there with his family agrim was like and then like we then we end up going to the park we mm-hmm. choose a spot to play in. we play for a bit then the security comes we dash then it's to the next spot but yeah we have the same system of like like we didn't have to pay for yeah. to play but i think recently like the turf system no, no they just have stadiums and just go to the stadium it's also fucked up cuz at that point now you go to a place and since you're paying you're like yeah i play midfield so i'm going to play midfield but as oh, a yeah, kid that yeah yeah here it's yeah, like that yeah. but as a kid when you're not paying and playing in a place you're, you're the carefree. fat kid you're the goalkeeper <laughs> you're the big guy you're the defender so like i feel like that has also changed how people approach football my coach in school made me goalkeeper and handball only because of my size he said you will cover more surface area you're statistically <laughs> you are going to be goalkeeper and i was such a great striker and you were also thick <sighs> sure it's just it's just maths <laughs> but yeah i mean it was so insulting cuz i was great with like tactics i was great like with like swift movement but i was name three made... football formations right now i'm talking about handball right? <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> but 4 3 2 1 Oh, oh shit yeah, that's, that's a good one Jesus that's a christmas tree bro <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing math <laughs> But yeah I I mean I I love sports I just love sports Bro speaking like, of still... getting serious during playing I've never met anyone who gets a- as angry as Aryan <laughs> <laughs> What Bro You have played with him that's a you have played with him Yeah I have played I've so played with him bro. This But is so fucked up bro This is so I have this. seen Aryan get into fights so often yeah, while Aryan playing gets football. into fights so bro, often Bro you fought like half week. of that whole team when we were getting a rash food Yeah so <laughs> what? so I feel like most people fight with one person Aryan will fight with nine people at the same time Go on is bro Wait when uh, we played with like Oh, you know, <laughs> okay, we'll have to bleep that out. I can I can only think about Aryan doing mangoose with Chandra. <laughs> oh fuck it. And that you know that I wasn't invited to play after that. Oh, oh, really? Same cuz I brought you. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Were you surprised? I wouldn't have. Not really. They, they gave us like a shit team and a good team like it's Yeah, it was unbalanced. Stupid. We were on the shit and team. And then the shit team also it's all a you team in football. That's what was missing. A team in football <laughs> is only shit because not because the players are bad but because they don't know how to pass to each other. Hmm. We went for the vibes. Yeah, sometimes you can have shitty players, but if they know how to play with each other, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just so much more fun to Then play. It's an orgy. Here, I don't know the mentality of. <laughs> there's the mentality of every like every corner has to be um, crossed in. My brother, when was the last time Sanjay scored a fucking header? <laughs> like who scores header in this day? In, like in this pickup game? And always going for the dribble. Yeah, just short pass it, bro. <laughs> just play. <laughs> No no Sharan used to do all that 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 thing that crossover No but he was good like, he would score He was really good yeah. crossover. I, You know I don't know I thought you'd be a professional footballer Yeah for the, even our family like uh, there was discussions but then what yeah. is the reason you didn't become Mentality No 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 <laughs> Mornings Morning <laughs> <laughs> 1 m I feel like yeah you'll wake up in the morning and train Yeah the yeah. discipline Yeah the discipline was mm. I like Cuz you went for trials no, says yeah, yeah. you got oh, you scored did? Yeah, yeah you got know, scored. No, so I think with football the thing was just like what we spoke in the last episode. Mm. I loved the idea of becoming a, a very famous football player, but I didn't I don't think I liked the putting in the work of the effort, going the training discipline. and yeah. the you like the destination not the journey. Yeah. Oof. 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 Look at you now. You can't even win the alumni game. <laughs> 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 This motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, <laughs> before I'll fight again. You know what? I'm coming back from Dubai just for the Alum Day game. <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah, guys, we are in Dubai right now. For those of you wondering. Yeah. Sharja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to go to Dubai Mall after this. Shake Shake. Shake Shake. Okay, yeah, don't, I don't stop, mind stop, Shake Shake. <laughs> I feel sad now. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You want to tell tell us about your trials? Trials at oh so yeah I did have like trials at Spartak Moscow, and I think it went pretty well. But like I never like went back and checked to see what happened and because mm-hmm. it's like a list or something. They, it's a list, yeah. Yeah, they and like they put you in like different. You don't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so so if you're like 
you could be on a fifth list sixth list depending on that and then they'll train you enough to like for you to get the best possible outcome when was the first time you ever remember playing football and thinking you're good at it this is something you should uh in school i guess like kv yeah in kv on that I... thought uh, my first memory is <laughs> of uh, me being like 3 4 years old him <laughs> kicking you as a ball no balu and him on one team against me <laughs> oh, you... a 4 year old I don't understand the logic behind it. <laughs> Can I ask you why do you like these people? <laughs> so why I, was, I, just I was just cultivating exploring. my winning mentality. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I win against a four-year-old. Oh. Now he has drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is why he comes charging at me in every fucking conversation. <laughs> I hope you're paying for his therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but the t- the t-shirts so you get like these training t-shirts or something uh, when you go for these trials mm. and even now if i wear those out like if you go shopping some like you get asked like oh fuck you play you play for them mm. and it's uh, like i feel great saying uh, uh, yes <laughs> 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 and like uh, another thing we, like a lot of indian kids do in russia is uh, we pretend like we're brazilian when we go play football oh yeah cuz cuz just the skin Bro, rodrigo he looks bangladeshi bro. yeah he looks bangladeshi he looks yeah, south yeah. indian he could be from uh vadodara yeah vadodara <laughs> <laughs> and his name could still be what rodrigo <laughs> <laughs> yeah no phone could check to be yeah. rodrigo <laughs> nice so yeah i think we should wrap up now yeah this is going to be a two hour episode <laughs> <laughs> and the best conversations no one's going to stay on for <laughs> Okay, I'm wrapping up. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else? No, I think let's save it for the next one. This is becoming too long. So she said. Oh God. <laughs> in what context? <laughs> He asked back. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the third episode. Uh, we will be back next week for the next one. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe. You know, you know what to do on YouTube. Okay. Ha 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 